Hi there, I'm Adrian and today I thought I'd talk about Terrapin by Sid Barrett. And if you're watching this video, you probably already know a little bit about Sid Barrett. He was the genius founding member of Pink Floyd. He was the guitar player and songwriter behind the album Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Uh, went on to make two bonkers but brilliant solo records. Um, then he, he went a bit mad and uh, disappeared into uh, reclusiveness and uh, obscurity for the, the rest of his days. Um, the song I'm going to look at today, Terrapin, is taken from uh, this album, The Madcap Laughs, his, uh, his first solo record, which has uh, long been a favourite record of mine. And it's a really good fun song to play, quite an easy song to play. If you know your basic bar chords shapes, um, I don't think you'll find this song too hard. I'm going to show you a few ways to approach it. There's kind of a basic strumming acoustic part. There's an overdubbed kind of arpeggiated electric part. Um, and then there's kind of a way of combining the two parts if you want to, which is, is similar to the way that um, I've seen David Gilmore play the song when he, he does it live. So I'm just going to start by playing through a bit of the song for you just so you can get a feel for it. So. I really love you, and I mean you A star above you, crystal blue Well, oh baby, my hair's on and about you I wouldn't see you Yes, I do. Well, oh, baby, my hair's on and about you. Floating, bumping, noses, dodge your tooth, the fins illuminous. Dark below the boulders hiding all the sunlight's good for us and so on something along those lines so let me just move the camera a bit closer then I will show you how to play it so on the original recording there are two guitar parts there's a quite simple acoustic strumming part and then there's an overdubbed electric part which is kind of arpeggiating the same chords. Both of the parts I believe played by Sid Barrett himself. So let me start by showing you the acoustic strumming part which is fairly easy to play I think. It's just got an open E chord and then some quite simple um, bar chords as well. Uh, the important thing here I think is to get the feel right and uh, in the right hand it's a nice relaxed sort of down up swinging feel something like this so one and two and three and four so you might just want to work on getting that nice and even so solid but but relaxed I think now the song starts with uh, an open E chord and uh, in fact tends to slide into this open E chord like this. So on the and of four, one and two and three and four. Just moving that E chord one fret lower, um, your sort of first finger runs out of room there, but if you move your second and third fingers back and then slide into the, the downbeat of beat one of the first bar. So it's an up and then down into the first chord of the song. So we've got two, three, four. Bar of E, then we've got um, a bar of, of G and uh, I think Sid is playing a, uh, a, a standard G bar chord at the third fret. Let me do that again, E to G again. Um, this time we've just got two beats on G and we're moving up to A minor. So it's another standard bar chord, this time at the fifth fret. Two beats uh, on that. So the 
first bit of the song so far we've got E to G and again star above you crystal blue two beats G two beats A minor um, then we've got a D bar chord and I'm playing this as a, uh, a fifth string root bar chord at the fifth fret. So that's fifth fret on the A string, barring at the seventh fret with my third finger on the second, third and fourth strings. Well, oh baby my bar of that. And then we've got this nice E7 chord um, here, which you might, might not know. I'm, there's an open low E string and then I'm playing seventh fret on the fifth string. Sixth fret on the fourth string with my, my second finger there. Little finger is playing the seventh fret on the third string. Index finger, fifth fret on the second string. And uh, I think you can sometimes hear a little bit of that open top E string coming through as well. So we have a, a bar on that, then we're back to A. Two, three, four. Uh, and then just to turn it round at the end of the verse, we're just going up to a C chord, C bar chord at the eighth fret. You've just got one hit on that chord. And then a G bar chord again, just one strum on that. And that's kind of a, a little turnaround at the uh, at the end of the verse. So if, if I just play you the verse from the D chord, we've got um well, oh baby my E7 hairs on end about you A. Two, three, four, one. And that, that C chord kind of comes on an upbeat. It's one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Round again for another verse, which is exactly the same. E to G. I fly above you. And again, yes, I do. A minor to D. Baby, my E7 has on and about you. Um, and then it's slightly different at the end of the the second verse. We're kind of leading into the B section with a with a G bar chord, and we're sliding that up one fret to a G sharp, and that takes us into the next section of the song. Not really sure what to call this next section let's just call it the B section of the song this is the floating bumping noses uh, dodger tooth line um, and all of that is just played on an, an, a standard A bar chord again at the fifth fret so, floating bumping noses dodger tooth the fins are luminous so two bars of, uh, of A then we've got this So we've got a C, C bar chord, just one strum, down to a G bar chord, and then we've got A sharp, which is uh, at the sixth fret, your index finger at the sixth fret, and then we've got that E7 chord again, just one strum on all of these chords rhythmically. It's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we're playing on that two and the three with those uh, those chord hits. Then we're back to A again. Fangs around a clown is dark below the boulders hiding all the... the two bars of A. Then we've got C. Sunlight's good for us. That was just a C going down to a G. Sunlight's good for us. Back to E7, and I think he just pushes the rhythm into that E7 a little bit. So it's one and two and three and four. And then that takes us round to the, the verse of the song again. And uh, that's pretty much it for the strumming part of the song. I think there's a, another, um, another verse and, and B section. There's a, a couple of little instrumental verses as well but I think if you listen to the recording uh, you should be able to piece everything together because it's, it's mainly just those two parts that I've just shown you. So I've just had a quick guitar change and let me show you this electric guitar arpeggio 
part. Uh, I'm not going to show this to you slavishly, note for note, exactly like the record because that would take ages and it would be far too tedious for you. So uh, instead I'm going to give you what I think is the essence of this guitar part. Um, and I think it's more important that you understand what's going on and then you'll be able to interpret it in your own way. So um, I think what's going on essentially is we're outlining exactly the same chords that we've just learned on the acoustic guitar, um, but we're playing an arpeggio part and we're just fretting the chords on the top three or four strings, playing the notes in those chords separately. Um, we're also adding in some nice melody notes which reflect and bring out the vocal melody of the song, making it a really effective guitar part. So let me just play you a bit of the, the verse part of the song as I hear it. Um, we've got this. something along those those lines. So um, um, as I said we're kind of fretting the chords um, slightly differently from the acoustic guitar part to free up some fingers to play these these melody notes. So we'll play the E chord like this. I'm playing the the index finger is the first fret on the third string, second finger is playing the second fret on the fourth string um, and then with my little finger I'm adding in some some melody notes. I'm playing the, the fourth string and the third string and I'm playing the fourth fret on the top string to the open string and then I'm playing the third fret on the second string and then the open second string. Then the third and fourth string again. So. All played with exactly the same rhythm as that uh, acoustic part. It's got that sort of swing feel. One and two and three and four and. So that's our E chord. Then to the G chord. Again just fretting uh, kind of the top part of that original bar chord that we had. Um, adding in some melody notes with the little finger. So I'm playing the fifth fret to the third fret on the top string. Fifth fret to the third fret on the second string and then the uh, third, fourth string, back to the uh, third, and then the second string, I think. Um, and again, the, the precise order you play these notes doesn't particularly matter. You can vary it a little bit, which uh, is what happens on the on the recording. So. That's E to G, we do that again. two beats on G and then up to A minor. Again I'm just playing that on the, the top uh, four strings so barring three strings at the fifth fret, third finger is at the seventh fret on the fourth string. Then we've got a, a D chord. Could just um, arpeggiate uh, a standard open D chord. You could you play something around the, the fifth fret there, so that's the, the seventh fret on the uh, second and third strings. Fifth fret on the top string or, or even an open top string. Um, I think at one point in the song I can hear Sid playing, playing something around that D shape up at the up at the tenth fret. So it doesn't particularly matter, you've got, got some choices there, but we just need a, a bar of D. Bar of E7 and we'll just use exactly the same fingering I just showed you for the acoustic guitar part. And then back to A. And again can add in those melody notes with your little finger just like we did on the, on the G chord doing that up two frets around the A shape. Um, and then just outline the, the C down to G just like we did on the acoustic part. So that's the verse section of the song and the, the B section works in exactly the same way. We can just 
you know, out, outline with these arpeggios the, the acoustic guitar part. So we've got um, a couple of bars on A. Um, you can keep it simple like that, just the notes in an A chord, or um, I can hear some extra notes added in on the uh, original recording. So. There are even some more dissonant ones I can hear in there, so kind of the... Kind of the seventh, eighth and ninth frets on the, on the third string. I um, can hear those in there occasionally, um, occasionally as well, so... Um, then we've got those series four kind of single hits on those chords. You can either just play the top part of those chords that we were playing on the acoustic guitar, so C to G, A sharp to E7, or um, on the recording it's really just the top note which is coming through, so... Some, something like that. Um, then we round uh, to the A chord again for two more bars. Um, to, to see again, sunlight's good for us. Um, and then on the first bridge section, sort of Sid de departs from this arpeggio part and just goes up to a, a high G and a, and a high B on the, on, on the, the top string. So uh, you could do that if you like, um, or you could uh, just, just play your, your normal. G to E, E7 arpeggio. So, um, as I say, that's kind of the essence of what's going on with this guitar part. There are lots of little subtleties and variations on the recording which you can, can try and pick out if you want to. But um, I think it's, as I said, it's, it's better just to understand what's going on and then interpret this part in your own kind of way. So quick switch back to my acoustic and there's one more thing I want to talk about which is a way that you might like to combine these two guitar parts into one, I suppose. And uh, this is something that I've seen David Gilmore do when he plays this song live. Um, there's some, some good footage on YouTube you might like to check out of him doing this song solo acoustic. Um, it goes something like this. So you can see I'm still maintaining that strumming rhythm that we had in, in the first uh, guitar part we looked at, but I've got some of those nice melody notes in there as well. So uh, um, just quickly take you through that. We're playing the, the E chord as we were doing before, but then you can just stretch out. It's a bit of a stretch, but it's, it should be doable. Stretch out to the, uh, the fourth fret with your little finger. And then the second fret um, with your little finger as well. This is all on the top string. Uh, and you can hear that that's the vocal melody. I really love you. So it's one, two, three, four. Um, then we're up to the G chord. Um, and then rather, rather than doing it as a bar chord, we're going to play it this way, which leaves our little finger free to, to fret uh, melody notes. So your thumb can come round the top and play the G root note. Um, we're going to mute the, the fifth string just by sort of letting your thumb or your, your third finger touch it. Um, playing the fifth fret on the fourth string, fourth fret on the third string. Index finger is just barring across the top two strings. And then just like in the arpeggio part we're just adding in the fifth fret on the top string. And then the fifth fret on the the second string so it's Back to E. Two beats on G, then we're up to um, up to uh, up to an A chord there with that kind of bar chord with the thumb over the top. D chord as before, fifth string root bar chord. 
E7 as before. And then A, A chord, and then you can add in some melody notes with your little finger again on this chord as well. So, so there you go. It's just a uh, kind of quite uh, interesting way of, of doing it if you want to sort of get some of those melody parts into your um, guitar part as well. So. So there we have a few ways that you can approach playing this song. I think if you're a beginner guitar player, you're probably going to want to start with those simple bar chords and strumming. It's actually a really good song to sing and play at the same time. If you've never done that kind of thing before, this song is not at all a bad place to start just because the vocal melody and the guitar parts seem to sit and, and work very naturally together. And uh, even if you haven't got the greatest voice like myself, uh, then it's still something that I urge you to have a go at doing and it's a, a lot of fun. Um, if you've got a friend to play with then the obvious thing to do would be to have one of you play the acoustic part and the other one to uh, follow along playing some of those um, arpeggios and then if you're more of an advanced player then you'll want to have a go at that kind of David Gilmore strumming with the added melody notes approach. So um, whatever you decide to do I hope you have a lot of fun with it. I will set up a web page um, for this song on my website, uh, link underneath this video, um, and there you'll be able to find uh, a bit more information about this song and uh, probably some tabs and some sheet music. Um, if you like what I do, please hit the subscribe button, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, um, all that kind of boring um, and tedious stuff I know but um, it does help my channel to grow and ultimately it will enable me to to make and to film more lessons for you so have a lot of fun with this one hope to see you again